Warning, the following video was created by a hungry, hungry boy who feeds off of engagement. So for your safety and the protection of those around you, like this video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. American culture is loud. American culture is brash. American culture is jackass. The 1990s was a great transitionary period within American and wider Western culture. The puritanical grip that teachers groups and religious sects had had on wider pop culture up until this point was slowly being loosened, with their wrinkled fingers to be replaced with the tattooed knuckles of cynical postmodern money men, willing to break any boundary or toy with any taboo to make a quick buck. This shift can be seen most flagrantly within the subculture of electronic play experiences, with the 1980s being defined by child-friendly mascots like Mario running and jumping through colourful fantasy playgrounds, whilst just a decade later video games would come to be represented by the bloody ravenous and titillatingly teenage thrills of doom and mortal combat. Whilst this was going on in living rooms across America, another equally contentious cultural coup was taking place just a video input and a quick channel surf away. Nine drugged out white boys hurting themselves and each other for the love of a nation. What could be more American than jackass? The still fresh release of Jackass Forever had me thinking about the fractious franchise and its broader cultural significance. Of course, in its heyday, it was a worldwide phenomenon and had swarms of imitators, much to the dismay of the opening warning, but somehow Jackass avoided its expected path as a passing fad and has even today held on to its staying power and relevancy with this latest, more wrinkled and greyer outing for the crew having grossed a cool $80.1 million at the box office, a number higher than the first film's 2002 box office takings, even coming off the heels of the mega-hit TV show run. So somehow, Jackass still has our hearts. But in 2007, MTV wanted to ask if they had our hearts enough to join the Jackass Crew. <laughs> now, I just made that sound a lot grander than intended, as 2007's Jackass the Game is really not that exciting. <laughs> you see, it's a minigame collection, strung together with a few cutscenes and the hope that the crew's charisma and unique personalities can translate through motion capture into graphics for the PlayStation 2 and PSP. And, I'll be honest, I don't know if they pulled it off. Though, nevertheless, this product of adaptation is just the type of cultural curiosity that I like to dissect on this channel. So, let's take a look. Jackass the Game's main draw is its MTV Story Mode, a campaign in which the player is tasked with taking over directorial duties for a new season of Jackass, after longtime showrunner Jeff Tremaine is put in hospital after a stunt gone wrong. Something about his testicles exploding? I don't know, just, just go along with it. What this director position translates to in gameplay terms is the player controlling a series of stunt themed minigames and completing objectives within them to earn money towards each episode's revenue goal. These episodes are how the minigames are broken up and actually do somewhat emulate the structure of an episode of the TV show, with seemingly random stunts starring different members of the cast coming and going, never outstaying their welcome. In between the episodes, Jeff Tremaine will leave the player voicemails from the hospital, with tips on how to make the show better and general tutorials. As you can probably tell by now, the game devotes a great deal of energy to immersing the player into the world of Jackass and attempts to really make the player feel like a member of the crew. 
from Jeff's tips to the fact that the entire cast gave their voice, likeness and motion capture performance to the game. Well, except Bam, but you know what, stick around to the end of the video if you want to hear that story. Even the little touches are there to further involve the player into their role as director, such as the loading screens. Each stunt's loading screen will display a diagram of the stunt crudely drawn on a crinkled piece of paper. This is a direct reference to the fact that the members of the Jackass crew would often in real life draw up diagrams like these for their stunt ideas. And speaking of stunt ideas, many of the stunts performed in the minigames were ones originally conceived to be attempted in real life by the crew, but were deemed too dangerous. I'm not quite sure how many of the minigames were based off of these stunts, and it's even harder to pass which of the ones originated as actual stunts because, I don't know, are the members of Jackass stupid enough to come up with the stunt ideas, get kicked down a mountain, or play golf with live grenades? Really, who's to say? The stunts, or minigames themselves, are all relatively mediocre. None of them are downright broken, and some are even a little fun, but for the most part, the challenges Jackass the Game offers feel like rather standard 3D minigames with a gross-out or radical coat of paint brushed over them. Take Egg Gulp, for example. All this minigame really involves is button mashing and meter monitoring, and if it weren't for the Jackass aesthetics, would be perhaps one of the most boring and uninspired minigames I have encountered in my entire gaming career. Though, those aesthetics did help it from becoming too painful in the five minutes I had to sit through it to unlock the next episode. The standout minigames are the ones that involve ragdoll physics. There's just something so viscerally entertaining about controlling and manipulating a limp virtual body, and the ways in which some of the minigames allow the player to do this actually feels somewhat inspired. The game's first minigame, Pachinko Precipice, shows this off well. One of the crew is pushed off of a cliff down a mountain, and the player's job is to tilt the terrain and get the crew member's body to smash into various obstacles. There's a really nice kinesthetic feel to the way this game controls, and the wild movements caused by the ragdoll physics is probably the closest the game gets to the schadenfreude the show is so known for. I also noticed, whilst playing this and other similar minigames, a stark similarity to a minigame from another extreme video game series. Skate. Yes, Skate's Hall of Meat challenges feel like an evolution of the ideas and mechanics toyed with in Jackass's ragdoll minigames. Now, I wouldn't go as far as claiming that Jackass the Game inspired anything, let alone one of the best sports titles of all time. Though, the similarities are there, and Jackass technically beat EA and Black Box to the punch. I have mentioned that Jackass the Game was released on PS2 and PSP, whilst mainly focusing on the PS2 version in this video, as the PSP port is just a stripped down conversion of the base game. Though, what if I were to tell you that Jackass the Game did in fact release on another console? It's on the DS! I hadn't brought this version up earlier in the video, as Jackass for the DS is actually an entirely separate game, and I don't feel it's necessary to do as deep a dive on this version of the game as we have for the others. Though, I did just want to briefly mention it, and talk about, well, how odd it is. Jackass the game for DS ditches the minigame structure for a pseudo open world setting, in which a customised player character walks around town doing odd jobs and stunts for the various members of the Jackass crew. If the changing gameplay structure weren't strange enough, the graphical presentation might just do it for you. Of course, the DS was a much less powerful system than the PS2 or even the PSP, so the graphics were always going to have to be adapted for this version of the game. 
Now, I have definitely seen DS graphics look a lot better than this. However, the low budget PS1 style polygonal scunginess of the thing actually sells the punk DIY aesthetic of Jackass and by extension, the game. The story moments and their presentation are equally strange as well. The moments in which the player character is talking to members of the Jackass crew are presented in a near visual novel-esque manner and depict the crew in these uncanny pixel portraits which have the player wondering which Jackass member they're actually meant to be talking to. I don't really have much else to say about this DS port except, I mean, look how weird this thing is, dude. I am hesitant to call Jackass the game a disappointment, as I don't believe expectations were ever particularly high for this video game adaptation. Though the small moments of innovation and interesting design the various minigames offer, and the attempts to immerse the player into the world of Jackass do imply something greater than the product we actually got. However, the realist within me is inclined to thank my lucky stars that this game offered any sort of enjoyment at all. I believe the best we can label Jackass the game is a neat cultural curiosity and a capsule of an extremely specific period of American pop culture. Though, as a game, it's really more of a kick in the balls. Okay, so before we go, I did promise those of you who got to this point in the video that I would reveal the story behind Bam Margera's absence from the game. And I guess you've earned it, so here we go. Unlike Bam's absence from the latest Jackass film, this story has nothing to do with the crew's interpersonal relationships or drug issues. No, the reason for Bam not being in the game is far more corporate and boring than that. Basically, Bam had already signed a contract with Activision to give up his sole video game likeness to the Tony Hawk franchise. Activision would not budge on allowing Bam's face to be in any other games beside Tony Hawk. So when the Jackass game was being conceived, one of the first things confirmed about it was that one of the two most famous faces from the crew would not be in the game at all. And mall dwelling, hot topic wearing wannabe skaters wept around the globe. Thank you for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to any button to start. We're on the road to hitting 1000 subscribers and your help would be truly amazing. Thank you and until next time.